There's an old saying in the Arab world, a house divided cannot stand for long. It will either perish or lie desolate. The saying may be old, but it still holds. Look at West Asia, a region divided in camps and mired in conflict. There are more than 22 Arab nations. With at least 400 million people, they follow the same religion, share the same set of beliefs, but do not get along very well. Saudi Arabia is pitted against Qatar, Lebanon against Syria, Morocco against Algeria. It wasn't always like this. There was a time when Arabs were a united lot. Pan-Arabism was a movement in the 1960s. It integrated the Arab world, both politically and socially. It promoted the idea of one Arab state. Today, the movement is dead. Now, what if I told you that this is set to change, that the Arab world may be united again, this time under a strategic alliance, an Arab NATO? Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. Today we are talking about the Arab NATO, a military alliance for West Asia, an alliance between governments on the lines of the NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It will have a common aim and a common enemy, and no prizes for guessing who the enemy is, the Islamic Republic of Iran. There's no concrete plan, but a lot of indications. The Americans are pushing for it. The King of Jordan is promoting it. Israeli ministers have confirmed it, and Egypt is already holding secret or should I say, not-so-secret meetings. So there is buzz, speculation, also a lot of questions. Like, is this really happening? Who will be the members? What is the objective? And what are the roadblocks? Also, will it be an alliance of equals or a hegemony of a few monarchies? We'll discuss all of this and more today. First things first, the idea is not new. An Arab NATO has been mooted in the past too. In 2015, the Arab League discussed it. It decided to join forces and form a military coalition, a coalition to counter terrorism. It flopped. In 2017 came another proposal, courtesy Saudi Arabia. Backing it was Donald Trump, the president of the United States. The plan was to unite six Arab states. It was supposed to be a security and political alliance to counter Iran. It did not fly. Five years on, Arab NATO is in the headlines again. So what's new this time? Well, lots of things. For one, the landscape has changed significantly. America has withdrawn itself from the region. Some of its allies feel defenseless. That's change number one. Number two is Iran's moves. It is said to be close to building a nuclear bomb. The deal with the West is dying a slow death. So the threat posed by Iran for the Arab states has risen. Change number three, relations between Israel and Arab states, they've improved. At least five Arab nations have normalized ties with Israel, and that's a monumental shift. And number four, Europe is at war. Russia has invaded Ukraine. NATO is suddenly relevant again. More countries want to join it. The Arab world is watching all of this. It faces military threats and wants a bloc like NATO. Long story short, the status quo has been appended, and there's a heightened risk of conflict. In the past few months, Iran has issued threats of war, expanded its uranium program, unveiled ballistic missiles, and dropped a few rockets on Iraq. In fact, quite a few rockets, to be honest. So the Arabs want a NATO to secure their interests. Who qualifies for a group like this? Six Gulf nations, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, and Oman, plus four Arab countries, Egypt, Jordan, the Sudan, and Morocco. And finally, the Jewish state of Israel. That's right, Israel too could be part of this alliance. Its defense minister has already confirmed it. This is what he said last week. Israel has joined a US-led network called the Middle East Air Alliance, MEAD. And this development is both fascinating and controversial. Fascinating because this would essentially be a military bloc. It would require sharing of intelligence and information, which basically means that Israel will have to share its defense technology with the Arab states. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out, how much intel and info Israel would be willing to share. And why is this controversial? Because many Arab states still do not recognize Israel, like Oman, Kuwait, Jordan. They still don't have official ties with Tel Aviv. There is no immediate plan to change that. So will they still be part of the Arab NATO and openly work with Israel? At this stage, your guess is as good as mine. What we can say for sure is that all these countries feel the need for such a bloc. They want to intensify regional cooperation, and this too is a major shift. Because traditionally, Arab nations have depended on the West for security guarantees. It was a clear quid pro quo. The Arabs gave oil, the Western powers gave security. But now America does not depend on the Persian Gulf for oil. 
So the commitment to security is no longer assured and this has forced the Arabs to explore options at home. They have to be self-reliant, which is why they want a multinational military force to take on regional threats. What kind of threats? Besides Iran and its missiles, there is a threat of domestic unrest, transnational movements by hardline Islamists, the threat of a conflict spilling into their borders, the threat of terror groups like ISIS making a comeback, and the threat of dictators like Bashar al-Assad becoming more assertive. Next question. As of today, how well can Arab states deal with such threats? Individually, their militaries do not account for much. The UAE has an active personal strength of 63,000. Kuwait has 70,000 personnel. Morocco, 195,000. Saudi Arabia, 227,000. And Egypt, more than 438,000. Some of these numbers look good, but they all fall short when compared to their arch enemy, Iran. Iran has more than 610,000 active duty personnel plus 350,000 reserve and trained personnel, total strength 960,000, more or less the same as the cumulative strength of Arab states. What about equipment? Air, sea and land capabilities. Iran beats the Arab states again. Look at this chart. With the exception of Egypt, every other Arab country is way behind Iran on the Global Firepower Index. Iran is on the third spot. Saudi Arabia is fifth. The UAE comes 7th, Kuwait 9th, Jordan is on the 10th spot, followed by Qatar, Oman and Bahrain. Basically, most of these Arab nations don't stand much of a chance against Iran individually, but they do have collective defence mechanisms. Like the Peninsula Shield, it's a joint military force made up of six GCC nations. GCC is the Gulf Cooperation Council. This force has a strength of 40,000 troops and happens to be reasonably well equipped. It is funded by petrodollars from member states. What it lacks is serious combat experience. It's not what you would call a formidable force. But if these countries form a NATO-like bloc, it changes the game completely. It brings Israel into the equation, the most powerful state in West Asia, equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry. It also happens to be Iran's sworn enemy. This tilts the strategic balance in the favor of Gulf nations. And this is something the United States has long desired. For decades, it has wanted to build an integrated defense shield in West Asia, one that would link radar, satellites, and sensors among Gulf nations. Barack Obama wanted it. So did Donald Trump and now Joe Biden. In fact, in a few days from now, Biden will be in West Asia. He'll be visiting Israel, the West Bank, and Saudi Arabia. What for? In Biden's own words, the agenda is to quote-unquote deepen Israel's integration with the region. Biden did not specify what that meant, but it doesn't take a genius to tell. This is to formalize the establishment of an Arab NATO, among other things. Just look at the developments. A few months back, CENTCOM dropped a big hint. This is a U.S. military command, CENTCOM. It protects American interests in West Asia. In January this year, it sought to support efforts to knit together air defense systems between Israel and its new partners. The aim, it said, was to share air defense data and build an overlapping radar picture for West Asia. Then in June, a bipartisan legislation was introduced in the U.S. Congress. It asked the Pentagon to present a strategy to integrate Israel and Arab states vis-à-vis -vis their air defense capabilities. And by the end of June, this report emerged. It said that the U.S. had convened a secret defense meeting in Egypt. In attendance were top military officials from the U.S., Egypt, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Jordan, the UAE and Bahrain. All under one roof in the city of Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. What was this meeting about? Building an integrated air defense shield for West Asia. So there's concrete evidence to say that the Arab NATO is indeed in the making. What they call it eventually is a different matter. What shape it takes and how soon cannot be predicted. Arab nations may vehemently deny this, but their actions speak otherwise. They all seem to be working on it. They need such a bloc to deal with Iran. The US needs it to shed its security burden. Israel needs it to integrate itself in the region. So this alliance, the Arab NATO, may not be a question of if, but when.